This video about cPanel and web hosting in general is sponsored by InMotion Hosting. If you'd like to sign up, there's a link in the description. Has anybody ever told you that the cloud is just other people's computers? Well, it's true. The cloud is other people's computers. You've got all your documents and your photos and whatever else in the cloud. And the cloud's controlled by Google or Microsoft or, you know, whoever. Apple iCloud, if you're doing it that way. Well, did you know that there exists open source solutions where you can run your own server on the internet that's on 24-7? And you can set up your own cloud-like services and get most of the functionality that you have through the various Google services. Now, the difference is that you pay for those services. You pay for the hosting versus using the Google Cloud and the Microsoft Cloud where they mine your data for information. But the good news is that there are hosting providers out there that don't mine your information. And you can pay for hosting, you can do whatever you want with it. You can even do encryption so that the hosting provider can't decrypt your files when you're not logged in, which is a nice touch. If you wanna know how, this video is gonna be about NextCloud. We're also gonna take a look at WHM and cPanel, which are uh, things under the hood. But the video is mainly about NextCloud, but I'm going to use it as a way to introduce you to cPanel and WHM and Linux hosting, what you run into that's kind of mainstream hosting, that's kind of commercial hosting, stuff that you would get you know, when you're not completely rolling it on your own. Like if you go to your boss in a company and it's like, hey, I'm going to do this Linux open source thing and I don't really know what I'm doing, but it's going to be great. But if you use cPanel and WHM, uh, you've got commercial support and you've got professional support and there's a whole bunch of people out there that really know what they're doing. So... If you want to get your hands dirty and want to get your feet wet, something like that, then, you know, the DIY solution is still there. But we're going to take a look at cPanel and WHM for the next two videos, and then we're going to go back to Linode and some other stuff. But this is really, it's a pragmatic solution. It's a good solution. It's an easy button solution. And you're still going to learn stuff. It's going to be great. All right, so the point of this video is to introduce you to something called cPanel, um, which is a web-based control panel for Linux hosting. And you see this with VPSs, especially inexpensive VPSs. We're going to take a look at letting you run your own hosting provider on a virtual private server at InMotion Hosting. Now, um, I contacted InMotion Hosting. I sort of sought them out and looked at the plans that they offered and looked at the deals that they had and signed up for their service and took it for a test drive. And I thought it would be a good fit uh, based on the feedback that I got from the Sandstorm videos and, you know, hosting on Linode. There were some people that it was a little too intimidating to, you know, just dive right in with Linode. They wanted something a little easier. And so the thing that I like about InMotion Hosting is that they have a support service where they will totally rescue you if you get in over your head. It is an hourly basis, but it's a, it's a reasonable fee um, for that. I mean, obviously, if you're uploading, like, your CSGO photo album, like your screen grab photo albums, it's not going to be important enough for you to do that. But if you're uploading family photos and, you know, your digital life and you want it off of Google, then this is something that you should look at. This is something that is along the line of what you should get for a service that balances, you know, having a true reachable support system, having a good system in place for backups. I like Linode system for backups as well, but the onus is on you to get it right a little bit. InMotion does a little bit more hand-holding with regard to setting up your, your backups and making sure that your, the backups of your stuff is working correctly. And they'll also hold your hand with your hosting as long as you don't go too off the rails. Now you can request full root access and get the, the you know full level, full control of everything just like you do with Linode so you can do anything that you want. When you go outside the realm of what they're able to support or what they normally support in the normal course of business, then, you know, the support would be would be billable in that case. Um, if you're looking to get off Google and you want to do hosting and you want stuff in the cloud, the best bang for the buck plan that I found is the one that's 70 gigabytes of hosting. It's a virtual private server. You can set up multiple domains through WHM. Each domain that you set up through WHM can have an independent cPanel access. So you can set up multiple domains on your virtual private server and let different people have granular access to just that one section of it. It's a little bit like isolating, you know, user accounts on the system. They are like under the hood, they are separate Unix accounts. It's not as much isolation as you get with something like Sandstorm where, you know, everything is running in its own container. 
basically. But it is a good level of separation and it is reasonable in terms of security. Now, when you upload, like let's say that you upload WordPress to be able to blog. When you upload WordPress, if you don't update WordPress, then you know eventually somebody is going to break into your website and somebody is going to do something, something bad. Uh, so there is a backup situation that you have to worry about, but you can control that through the InMotion control panel as well, and you totally should. So, you, you know, it's not totally zero responsibility. You still have to be responsible for updating your packages. So with that said, let's dive in and take a look. This is the InMotion login page. Basically, you'll sign up, you'll log in with your email address and your password. There's a link in the description below that you should use to sign up with InMotion um, so that you get the best deal. It is a one-year term on the sign up. Well, you can do month to month, but you get a better deal if you sign up for a one year term. And if you do sign up for the one year term, it's a better deal than Linode, plus you get the support and everything else. Once you've logged in, you'll get a screen similar to this. This is your like control panel of control panels, I guess. This is where you can configure some things like, you know, InMotion will provide DNS service if you need it. A lot of time your domain registrar will provide DNS services. I suggest you use your DNS services with your domain registrar, but you've got the option of using InMotion if you want. You've also got the ability to purchase a support ticket, change your plan, change the details of your hosting, you know, whatever you might want to do. The two things are cPanel and WHM. cPanel will take you to the cPanel for the domain, like your main domain that's on your VPS. But WHM will take you to like the host manager. And WHM works on bare metal as well as it does on virtual or private servers. And WHM is a management portal for managing the accounts on your virtual or private server. And the accounts on your virtual or private server are isolated. A normal use case for cPanel accounts on your server is to service different domains or different subdomains. And so we're going to start by setting up a subdomain for an open source application called NextCloud. And so in order for us to do that, we're gonna to need to log into WHM, which will give us a screen similar to this, and then we're going to add an account, basically. So I just put in add a new account here. Now there's all kinds of options you can configure. You have a lot of control in WHM of the GUI, and I'll show you the Apache rebuild process in just a second. So we're gonna create a new domain, and this is gonna be cloud, Wendell.tech. And yeah, that's fine for the username. And then we'll set a password. We'll, we'll do the password generator. And we'll use that password, which hopefully will not make it into the final video. I mean, with WHM, you can really configure this. If you make the account a reseller, then the reseller will have limited privileges to WHM and be able to create more accounts, more cPanel accounts under that. So like if you have a friend and you're splitting the service between the two of you, you can totally just, you know, give make them a reseller and then they would be able to create sub accounts. You can still see the account like as the global admin, you can still see the accounts that they create and that sort of thing, but they have more privileges to WHM. Normally the accounts that you create don't have any privileges to WHM at all. They're just cPanel accounts. They're just hosting accounts. This is like the difference between the root user on the system and just regular user accounts. Regular users can, you know, host a website. They can host a domain name and they can do some stuff, but they can't really, they can't really do much else. I'm not going to make the account a reseller. DKIM and SPF are options that are related to your email hosting. Uh, I don't need email for, you know, something at cloud wendell.tech so we're not going to worry about that right now if you're interested in email hosting and you want to use something pragmatically easy like cpanel and whm for email hosting that's in a different video so for now it's gonna, we're going to do this i'm going to leave it on local mail exchanger because you just you get that whenever you create an account and i'm going to hit the create button it created the account we can see the details this is the public ip address and this is the ip address that has been assigned to this virtual host and so you'll need to make sure that the DNS entry for cloud.yourdomainname.com or whatever you set up .yourdomainname.com or .tech or whatever points to that IP address and you can see the the password and the you know all of the other information hopefully the the password has like a block over it or something uh, but you can see that it gives you a little summary here you'll want to you'll want to save that into your password manager or your notes or whatever so once you've created your cPanel account you can go to the list accounts section of WHM and click on the cPanel icon. The cPanel icon will pop open a new window or a new tab, and this will be cPanel. Like this is the first time logging into cPanel, so you're going to get kind of a wizard or a tutorial or whatever. And if you ever bought, you know, shared hosting from somewhere that's only giving you cPanel access, this should look pretty familiar. 
So you can install packages from here and do stuff from here. Now we're going to set up Nextcloud. We're going to upload Nextcloud. And we've got all the access that we need to do that. But first we're going to go back to WHM. Now one of the cool things about WHM is that it's actually built to be relatively low headache. So, you know, if you've got a small operation and, you know, you want to do, you know, hosting, reselling, or you're an enterprising high school student and you want to sell, you know, sort of basic web hosting to all your friends or blog access or something for a few bucks a month, WHM's a surprisingly professional solution. And so the first thing that you want to do is click this basic web hosting setup manager thing and set up your contact information and just read through this and when you read you know don't change your IP address or anything like that but read through this for how you want to set this up most of these values are plain language to look at and understand what they do the first sections here you can actually give it your contact information you know like a your text messages address if you have like a you know text uh, an email to text message uh, gateway and the server will actually email you on events like somebody is trying to brute force log into your server or there was a problem downloading an update or there was a problem doing you know whatever WHM will actually manage the uh, operating system um, updates and the packages that need to be updated and it will install them automatically it'll even install kernel updates automatically but it's up to you to reboot on your own now with the VPS Sometimes the provider will update the kernel and reboot it for you, and sometimes it's up to you to reboot it. It just depends on what type of VPS it is, if it's, if it's a para-virtualized VPS or a containerized VPS or a, f a full kernel virtualization VPS. Usually depends on the answer to that question. Uh, InMotion tries to hold your hand a little bit with those kinds of things to make sure that it runs. If for some reason cPanel has a problem, you're entitled to free support to help you know get that problem worked out with whatever the problem is with cPanel. Um, it is possible to add SSL certificates and, and that sort of thing, that's no problem. You can even recompile Apache from source, update PHP, and tweak your server settings to be something that you want just by going to Easy Apache. So I'm going to click on Easy Apache so we can take a look at it. It's like, oh, Easy Apache 4 is not available when Easy Apache 3 is active. Uh, Easy Apache 4 installation instructions. I'm not going to switch to Easy Apache 4 just yet. We're going to just go ahead and use Easy Apache 3. So what this will do is actually connect to, you know, cPanel's thing and download stuff. And so I'm going to do basic Apache 2.4, PHP 5.6, NPM worker, and you know, more settings. So we're gonna do, actually we can we can start with this one. We'll hit the gear to configure it. So it's giving me an option, which version of Apache do you want? I'm gonna go with the newest one. And it gives you hints about this. I mean, this is, this is made for people that, you know, are not super crazy, pedantic, neckbeard, whatever. Now this is gonna run PHP 5.6, you may be thinking, well, wait, what about PHP 5.7? You know, easy Apache 4. But PHP 5.6, some software does not work yet with PHP 7, so that's fun. On cube, SUPHP. SUPHP is an extension to Apache that will actually run your scripts in Apache as a specific user. So if you have somebody with like a compromised WordPress installation, hopefully that sandboxes them to just that cPanel user. Without mod SUPHP, or some other type of mitigation that runs the Apache processes or the PHP processes as an individual user, then the web server runs as the same user for everybody, which is undesirable from a security standpoint. So WHM actually provides several methods of making sure that PHP scripts and scripts under um, cPanel accounts actually execute, like when they're called for by the web server, actually execute as that user. But out of the box, your Apache configuration is running as the Apache user so if you've got multiple people on a box and you know you're serving up PHP files, all those PHP files by default will run as Apache. But with WHM, the default is to make sure that each individual user has their own each individualized sandboxed process for running executable scripts from the web. So it's a security thing. <laughs> you know, if you're getting into web hosting and web development, it would behoove you to click read more on all of these and understand what all these options do. Because at one point or another in your career, you're going to need to know something about some of these things. Uh, at this point, you've got the option to save and build or do an exhaustive options list. I'm going to do the exhaustive options list. And so these are even more extensions to Apache that you can load if you want. And, <laughs> and the companion more info links. And so you should totally check that out. It's really awesome for learning about this stuff and the extensions that Apache offers. Of course, you can, you know, read about them without installing cPanel, without signing up for an account. That works fine, too. Now, this set of defaults actually looks pretty okay, so I'm going to leave it alone. 
if you want to reduce the attack surface area, you can disable stuff that you don't need, but you know, it's fine. So I'm going to do this and then I'm going to do save and build. Yes, I understand. All right. So once you've saved the profile, you've in entered a name and file name and description for your, for the profile, because you've tweaked something, then it's going to save your output and it's going to actually start compiling Apache. Now this script output to the web browser is a lot like what it would look like from the command line. You can actually, if you SSH into your VPS and you have root access, you can run all these scripts and do all this stuff from the SSH command prompt. But you know, WHM pragmatic designed to be easy, designed to be the easy button solution. It works well for, for what it is. It works well. Uh, yeah, it's not as flexible as a bare metal system, but if you want something that's not Google, that is almost as easy as Google, that's not going to spy on you, it's not a bad solution really. This is literally compiling Apache with all of those options and PHP and everything else, which is exciting. Time for some Pixel Dungeon while it compiles. So if you picked up one of the .tech domain names, or you're thinking about it, there's a coupon code below, uh, and you want to set up your, you know, VPS or whatever, you get the VPS from the WHM control panel thingy. So you'll want to log in and you'll want to go to the DNS management and you'll want to do manage DNS. You'll get a pop-up like this. And what we're going to do is add an A record. Now that's going to be cloud and the time to live 7200 is fine. So we're going to paste the public IP address from the WHM setup that cPanel gave us basically when we created the cPanel account that corresponds to this domain name. Add the record, done. Now this is going to take you know, a few hours. It may be live instantly, it may be live a few hours. DNS is just like that. It just depends on how long it takes the records to propagate. It depends on your DNS provider and a bunch of other settings. So we've added that. It should work in a bit. Uh, you can test it by going to a command prompt and doing ping and seeing if it can be looked up. So you can do ping, um, Yeah, see, it's not going to work. It's going to say, oh, couldn't find it. If it starts pinging and it returns the IP address, then you're in good shape. It worked. But you got to give it time to, to take effect. That's how you set up DNS for this. Okay, if you're having trouble connecting through SSH, you may need to add your IP to the firewall. So what you would do is, you know, put in your public IP address here and click add rule and restart. And so this will add an IP address exception to the firewall and then you'll be able to connect to SSH. If you don't know your public IP address, IP chicken will give you your public internet address. And so you can just copy that to the clipboard and then go back, paste it in and add the exception rule for the particular IP address that you're using. So that's neat. Once you've done that, you should be able to connect with SSH. And once you're logged in, you can CD into the public HTML folder and you can download and install Nextcloud. All you gotta do is copy the link to the clipboard, wget the tar gz and then tar xvjf, the file name tar.bz2 strip one. Now what strip one does is it strips off the first directory from the extraction because by default Nextcloud will dump into the Nextcloud folder. We want it to just dump where it is, which in our case is public HTML, which is going to be the site root of cloud.wendel.tech. See this public HTML folder is mapped to the root of cloud.wendel.tech. So when you go to cloud.wendel.tech and you don't have any file specified there, it's going to automatically know to look in that public HTML folder for executable files. And so by default, it's index.php or index.html. Index.php index will get loaded, and that is the Nextcloud software. So it'll work really well. <laughs> All right, so we're up and running with Nextcloud. What do we need to do to enable it? Well, you just drag and drop files to it. Let's drag and drop some royalty-free music to it. Look at that. I uploaded and can download an MP3. One way that you can extend on cloud is through apps, plugins, and that sort of thing. So you can click the logo and go to apps. By default, you can see that there are quite a lot of apps that are installed and enabled in the system. You can read more about what they do. That would be good so that you better understand what the system does because different kinds of files that you upload, it'll do different stuff. It reacts differently. So there's a built-in PDF viewer, for example, a log reader, all sorts of fun stuff. 
you should go to multimedia and enable the audio playback thing if you want to play back your audio in the browser. This is kind of nice because you can just sort of stream your audio from wherever you are and it, it doesn't really matter and it's all browser based. All right, once you've clicked enable, then that will work really well. Now there's all kinds of fun stuff you can do like video conferencing over web RTC, but, but we're not really going to cover that in this video. We can check our enabled plugins and make sure that we've got an audio option now. And we can see that we do have the audio player now. Let's go back to our file list. <laughs> and you guys can't hear it, but it is now playing the audio when I click on it instead of downloading it. So you can set up playlists and the whole nine yards if you really want to. Organize your folders, however you want to do that. But it's available anywhere. I mean, I'm just in the browser. It, it works just as well on mobile. Although you can get the sync clients for mobile as well, mobile and desktop, and actually sync the files. But uh, Nextcloud is extensible, and this is really only the beginning. From here, you can play with it. It's a web user interface. I trust that if you made it this far, the rest of it is really, you know, sort of all downhill from here. So if you come up with a recipe or you come up with something really cool, come to the forums and show off what you've done with Nextcloud so that everybody can take a look and see what interesting things that they built and sort of riff on that. And, and you know, you end up with a really interesting project when you put it together that way. That's been a quick look at cPanel, WHM, and a quick setup for Nextcloud. In the next video, we're going to take a look at configuring email on cPanel. Although if you read the documentation, you can pretty much take it from here. cPanel is really easy to get email set up, but I'm going to show you some stuff on WHM to, in terms of changing your email processor and, and that sort of thing. And so that's the easy button for setting up your own self-hosted webmail solution that also includes, uh, you know, a pretty good message backing store and pretty good web-based access and pretty good IMAP setup and, and that sort of thing. And it has a backup option. You know, let me know what you think about this. This is sort of a new thing. We're doing a little bit of experimentation, but hey, it's a new year. That's cool, right? Sorry the camera's a little bit weird, but I'm working on that. I've got some hardware problems uh, at this computer. So we'll see. See ya.